guys, it's your girl Victoria back to you with another review for Married at First Sight season 17, episode 13, called Exploring Intimacy at an Altitude. Mm-hmm. So we are four days until Chloe and Michael's wedding. Chloe is excited, she's hopeful about her upcoming wedding. We hope all the best for her, and Michael. We didn't get to 23 days until decision day for the rest of the folks. And Becca and Austin, they go to a plant shop and I guess make plant houses with uh, naked toys, whatever the case may be. And they talk about sex because that's all that Becca can think about. Okay, you know, I hope the best for y'all too in y'all sexual journey together. Okay, then we get to Cameron. Uh, we see him in the car. He's going to the hospital for his operation because, you know, we found out last week he has like a heart health condition. So, you know, he said he's not going to contact Claire at the moment. And, you know, she don't need to be involved and whatnot. And I'm just in my head, I'm like, she was already acting, I'm not going to say a fool, but she was already in her feelings last week. So you not including her and in what's going on with your little health condition. I'm not going to say little because it's big because he did have an operation. But at the same time, it's just like Cameron makes it seem, try to make, like, you know, the people that, you know, obviously, yes, they have an actual condition that needs to, you know, medical attention, right? But sometimes I feel like certain people, they kind of milk it to get you to feel sorry for them. Cameron is one of those people. So it's just like, while I'm sorry that you're going through this and, you know, having to deal with this whole situation, I feel like you're really trying to get us to be like, oh my gosh, Cameron, especially the fact that Claire is feeling so bad, crying left and right about him and his, you know, health problems. So it's like, you're not including her when she seems like she's been very supportive from what we see on camera. I don't know how it is off camera. But on camera, she seems like she's one of those very supportive friends or wives in this case. Because, you know, even though they're separated, I don't think they're legally divorced just yet. So it's just like, it seems like she's doing everything right, but you don't want her involved. Okay, whatever. That's your decision or whatnot. But it's just like, she come crying to us, Cameron. I'm, that's all I'm going to say. So anyway, we didn't move on to Brennan and Emily. They talk about, you know, last night slash last week, what we done seen. And Brennan ends up apologizing, said he's going to work on bettering himself. And Emily tells him that she appreciates it, but she lets us know in the confessional that, you know, he, you know, he could apologize all he wants, but it really don't mean nothing because he still ends up doing the same crap that he been doing. And you know what? Emily, I'm just glad you're finally able to see it because in the beginning, I was really nervous for you, girl. I was nervous because I was just like, girl, the way, you know, you've never been in a relationship. So it's like, is that going to cloud your judgment of like trying to make it work, even though it's kind of like obvious that it is not gonna work but i feel like you know she's coming to terms with yo this man ain't for me he ain't about doing nothing for me i'm doing more for him than he's doing for me so I, she's starting to open her eyes and for that emily i applaud you i commend you for all that um then they write notes to their younger selves and read it to each other i didn't take nothing from either of the notes you know kudos kumbaya maybe i should do that too but it's like i'm not gonna do it right now because why so, you know, they do that every season. So that that's why for that little shindig that they did, I was just like, okay, it's going to go over my head because what else is new? They do this every season. It's tradition. We then get to 22 days until decision day, okay? Claire is talking to us, saying that she's relieved that Cameron is doing okay. He told her to take a step back while he gets his surgery because she tends to worry a lot. And while I can understand some someone of like, not dealing with someone who has like emotions like that may be kind of turned off to someone being like so overly affectionate towards them even though it's like you kind of wanted her to be affectionate towards you it's at the same time it's like well anyone who cares about you is going to be worried if you're about to go under an operation yes yeah, some people do the most and they're worrying versus others but at the same time it's like i i feel like Claire's worrying is genuine. Even though, to me, sometimes I'm just like, where did all this emotion come from? Because it seemed like you really didn't have no emotion toward him when y'all was together. But now that y'all not together no more, it seems like now all this care and affection towards him is coming out. Which to me is, you know, a little confusing. But, you know, sometimes it takes someone leaving for them to realize, like, okay, dang, they, they actually was a good person. Maybe I should have gave them more of a, more reassurance or whatever the case may be that, you know, they done messed up on. But, you know, I'm just like... Cameron, I don't know what you want. You know, obviously, I guess in his eyes, since they're separated, she shouldn't be worried about him no more. Because it seemed like if the worlds were reversed, he wouldn't be worried about her as much as she's worried about him, you know. So maybe that's the case. Maybe he already like, okay, we're not together. So he already blocked out her even being anything to, to him and whatnot. But clearly she still cares. So it's like, I wouldn't shut her off just like that, Cameron. But 
to each their own as everybody's own lives and whatnot. But I guess Claire cared about homeboy because she was crying and stuff. And, you know, I'm just like, Cameron, please just, just let her in. You know, let her come visit you at the hospital, you know, because she coming crying to us. And then I'm just, she looking at me crying and, you know, probably looking for some reassurance or some advice. But I'm just sitting here looking at her like this. Like, oh, you, you really care for homeboy, huh? I mean, that's nice. That's nice. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to, you know, but it's just like, I'm just, so so you, you really care for homeboy. Mm hmm but he won't let you in the hospital because, you know, you, you, you too, you too, you know, you worry a lot. Mm hmm You don't come crying to us, Claire. You know, we, we support you and all that stuff, um, for the most part. But at the same time, it's just like, I don't, don't cry, come crying to me because I don't know, I'm not going to know what to tell you in this moment. You know, I'll, I'll just tell you to call Cameron. Go visit Cameron. Okay. He may not want you to be there, but. You know, where his family at? Not here. So, you know, go, 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 go visit Cameron. Okay. Don't talk to us. Go, go, to, go talk to Cameron. So then we get to Emily, Claire, and Becca. They have a picnic, talk about the relationships. Of course, like I said, Claire's been emotional all episode. Not that we've seen her a lot this episode, but she gets emotional once again when she's talking about Cameron and his health issues. Nothing else to take from that scene. Then we have Brandon and Austin. They're grilling and talking about the relationships and whatnot, issues that, that they got going on. So nothing else to take from that. Like I said, like I always say, it's the same scenario, same situation, different episode of the season. All right. So then we get to everyone um, as far as like Austin uh, what's his name? Brennan, Emily, Claire, and Becca. They're playing pool together. And then that's when they get a surprise from Mike. He's coming with his crown, Michael. He's saying this is the last time he's wearing his crown before he retires it. For me, I'm just very confused as to why, one, he still has the crown. Two, he's still wearing the crown. The girl left you at the altar, bruh. If we're taking this real f for what it is, for what we've done seen, if it is real, what happened, if it wasn't rigged or whatnot, she left you at the altar. She got you the crown. Why are you still wearing it? Why are you still walking around with it? Why do you still have it in your possession? I don't understand. I would have been got rid of that uh, a crown long time ago. The moment she she uh, gave me back her gift, I would have gave her back her gift. I'm just saying. So the fact that he was still wearing it, saying he oh this is the last. Time. So you was wearing it still? I don't. Michael, no, no, no. That's not what we do. That's not um. <laughs> what's the word that? What's the term people use? Uh, uh, that's not what high level men do, but maybe he don't want to be a high level man. You know, I don't know, but he lets them know that pretty much he, he goes through a whole long story explaining how he talked to the experts and they asked him, no, 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 no. He just basically let them know he's going to get married at first sight again. And, you know, they're happy for him. Try to give him some advice. He asked him, you know, invites them to come to the wedding because he needs their support. And Beck and Austin will be out of town, but everybody else agrees that they'll be going. So that's nice. That's cute. You know, that they're going to be in support of him. And, you know, finally we'll have like not all five couples. But, I mean, unless if he invited Lauren and Orion behind the scenes or whatever. But, you know, to have them all at the, that one wedding and see how it goes. So best of luck when that day comes which we'll see next week. So then we get to 21 days until decision day. So Brennan, he Zoom calls his friend Richie on his laptop to talk about his marriage, what's going on, what's not going on, whatnot. And the friend pretty much tells him to stop overthinking and stop to thinking thinking of the exercises that the experts are giving them to do as chores and to have more deep and meaningful conversations. So Brennan says a lot of nice things about Emily, how she's like the most wonderful person he's ever met, which to me is like, when people say that, I just be like, Y'all be lying because I, I don't believe it. I, I just don't believe it. Okay, you someone you knew and been treating like crap. They're the most wonderful person. So you're going to treat the most wonderful person like crap? That don't make no sense, Brennan. You don't make no sense to me. But, you know, in this moment, I'm like, what he does say is nice about Emily. But for me, one, is like you lying. Okay, because if you really felt that way, why are you treating her the way you treat her? Um, And two... You know, it's nice that you said that about Emily, but I would have appreciated more if you told Emily face to face versus Richie through Zoom call. So that's all I have to say in that regards to that. So, Brandon, you can say whatever you want, but like I always say, like everybody always say that I stole the phrase from where everybody always say, actions speak louder than words. So you can say all you want to try to make it seem like, you know, she's a perfect person, but it's like if you really felt like she was a perfect person, you wouldn't treat the perfect person like an imperfect person, even though no one's perfect. I, I hope you're you're getting what I'm trying to say here, okay? I, I go on a tangent. You know, I apologize. But, you know, we're going to continue on. We get to 
Back in Austin, they talk in bed about their upcoming meeting with uh, Dr. Pia. And she shows up. They have a sit down talk with her. Becca, we already been knowing for the past few weeks, she's hot and ready for the SEX with Austin. Austin is a little slow walking into it because he's too much in his head about it, so much pressure about it because that's all they've been talking about lately. So Dr. Pia suggests for them to remove the expectations and stop talking about it and just be about it and explore their bodies and chemistry. We're going to see how that works out later on in this episode. So we get to one day until Michael and Chloe's wedding. Michael's ready and anxious. You know, he's ready but anxious because, you know, he's kind of going back in his head about what happened. The last time he was at the altar getting married at first sight. We have Chloe. She's getting her nails done with her mom and friend or sister. Some Her mom and somebody else. And, you know, she's excited, a little bit nervous, but excited at the same time. And then we move on to Emily and Brennan playing indoor soccer. So... Um, Emily already explained that, you know, she has a lot of experience with soccer and whatnot. And, you know, when she shows, when she puts, you know, money to her mouth and her actions speak loud, well, her actions mimic or are equal to the words she spoke. And Brendan seen she was good because she beat him at their little game. He was impressed. And I'm just, because, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie. When they was playing, I was just like, oh, I hope he don't, when she wins, he, he don't be a sore loser. But it seemed like he... He, you know, let her, not let her win, but he, you know, appreciated the fact that, you know, she's a good uh, soccer player and, you know, he expressed that to her as well. So they sit down and, you know, they talk. And for me, honestly, looking at this scene, it seemed like for the first time, Brandon was into the conversation with Emily and, you know, based on his body language and his eye contact with her, and he seemed very engaged in the conversation. I'm just like, okay, Brandon, I'll give you that. But, you know, we're going to see you going to act a fool later on when you sit in front of Dr. Pia. So then we get to Becca and Austin. They get a knock on the door and they have a sexy care package from Dr. B Pia. This is, like I said, this is tradition. They do it to like one or two couples every season. And uh, Becca's ready. Austin looks uncomfortable when they was going through the box and baskets. And they play blindfold sexy, blindfold sexy obstacle course. And they seem to have a good time. So that's cool. There's nothing else to take from that scene. Listen, I'm all here for doing things different, spice things up. Kudos to y'all. Can I get one for free? Okay, we then move on to Dr. Pia. She meets with Emily and Brennan. This is where, you know, Brennan goes back to his usual ways. Of course, everything goes left as usual. He's saying everything is perfect, but Emily is saying, oh, um, no, things could be better. So Brennan is feeling frustrated because... You know, he thought everything was good, but clearly he wasn't aware that Emily didn't feel that same way. So for me, I wrote down in my notes, it feels like whenever Brennan doesn't have control of the conversation or is not going in a positive light, especially in front of cameras, that's when he gets frustrated because he wants everything to be perfect because he wants to be perfect for the cameras. And even Emily lets us know that in the confessional that, you know, when he's on camera, he makes things seem a certain way but when he's off camera that's when he be going off and stuff more so than what we have saw, seen thus far and for me it's just like okay so you're saying Brennan be acting fake in front of the cameras which a lot of people do when they're on reality tv but it's like there's only so much fake you can do because if you're living if you have a camera on your face every day for like two months straight you there's bound to have some trueness of your personality coming through some way somehow unless you're just very that rigid that you could keep yourself in control it is very, you, you, your real true colors are going to come out, show out one way or another. And I guess Emily is frustrated at the fact that he tries to still put on this facade in front of the camera versus off the camera. But at the same time, Brennan, he, he's just frustrated with Emily because it's like, she's not expressing to him that she has these problems. And even Dr. Peel, Peel called Emily out saying, look, you know, it seems like you're letting me know that, you know, things are not going good, but when it's you two, you just go with the flow and, you know, agree with whatever he says. So Dr. Pia then starts asking Brennan questions and ask him if he uh, trusts Emily because she was asking how he's feeling. So he said, you know, he's just blindsided um, from her saying, you know, things are not going good. So she asks him if he trusts Emily, goes to commercial for dramatic effect, comes back from commercial for dramatic effect, and Brennan's, Brennan says that they were building their trust. Emily, this was Emily's first time hearing that, and she didn't realize she broke his trust in the first place. And this is where I go back to what I always say time and time time and time again. Communication is key, people. If you feel in some type of way, you got to let the other person know. Now, you know, easier said than done. You know, I too need to work on that sometimes, especially sometimes if I feel like it's going to ruin the vibe or something. You know, I, I, 
I'm a person who has a difficulty. I, I can admit, you know, I have difficulty with uh, confrontation. And, you know, I, I avoid conflict at all costs because I don't like none of that refract. Maybe it's childhood trauma. I don't know. I need to talk to a therapist. But, you know, that's just me being vulnerable with you guys for a little bit. But we're not talking about me. We're talking about him, you know. So it's like I can understand from Emily's perspective, maybe not wanting to poke the bear as she's expressed before. But at this point, look, I'm getting to a point in life, like, especially if I don't know you like that, man, bro, what are we doing here? You know what I'm saying? So for Emily, she got to work on that. Uh, Brennan got a lot of things to work on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and um, Dr. Pia pretty much tells them, does she tell him to do anything? No, because when Brennan, she was trying to get Brennan to explain why does he feel the way he feels. And he was just expressing the fact that, listen, you know, I wish she would communicate like, okay, we made this plan, but you know, here's what I'm thinking as a change of the plan. So he's just frustrated, I guess, that she's not validating that they made plans in the first place. So Dr. Peter tries to explain that to Emily. So what does Emily do? She, she cries her, no offense, her white woman tears. And, you know, because she's frustrated, saying she's sad. Brennan said he's sad, too. And I'm just looking at the both of them like, uh-huh. So then um, they tell each other what they need in order to continue to rebuild their trust in each other per Dr. Pia's uh, question for them to do to each other and whatnot. And I guess we're going to see where it goes from here. But at this point, I'm in, I'm in exha exhaustion of this whole Brennan and Emily situation. I mean, really all the couples at this point, but like they're the only ones left that seems like we really know it's not going to work, but they're just trying to make it through these next, I don't know, 20 some days. But for me, it's just like, can we just dead it? Because we clearly are trying to make fetch happen where there's no fetch to be happened. You know, so Dr. Peter, you can try all you want, but you know, it's just like they both are stubborn. Okay, she said something else, but along the same lines, they're both stubborn and want to do things their own way and want to be received of their, their love or whatever their love language is. This is my words, not no what no one else said, but to me, it just feels like y'all both want to be loved how you want to be loved. The other person's not doing it, but instead of, you know, trying to engage that other person and doing what they need because they both feel like they do more than enough for each other. I don't know, man. Like, clearly, this is not going to work, and y'all get on my nerves, and y'all just need to be done at this point because I don't know what else to say. I be trying to make fetch happen with my reviews, but y'all don't be giving me fetch to even do a fetch-ish review or episode. You know what I'm trying to say. So, anyway, moving on. We, we don't care about them for the rest of this episode. Uh, we lastly get to Austin decorating their uh, him and Becca's bedroom, you know, to make a little look, a little romantical guy, you know, uh, candles all over the place. If you ask, you know, don't don't let uh, Gil see this because he's going to say it's a safety hazard, fire hazard, and whatnot. So, you know, hopefully they blow it out before they get to what they're about to get to from what it seems like. Uh, Becca loves a surprise and she says she's usually the one initiating these type of things. So to be in the passenger seat, it is new for her. But, you know, she's going to, you know, take on this, you know, being the uh, passenger princess, princess. What do they say? What do they call it? Passenger princess. OK, so they ask each other intimate questions from a stick. Um, I think you get that on Amazon for less than $20, maybe like $10. So, you know. Go get yours today. And um, it ends in a makeout sesh to the point where, you know, Emily, not Emily, Austin and Becca eventually kick us out the room. You know, Austin's even doing that. I'll, I'll, I'll catch you later. But for me, I'm just like, let's hope you actually do something because, you know, it be seeming like you about to do something, but then you end up not doing nothing. So we're going to see if you do, you do something next week. And that's the end of the episode. We're going to see if, you know, Becca finally gets her rocks off, you know, and, you know, she probably been using the heck out of her vibrators and whatnot. She got a new one in the basket. Um, so we'll see what doesn't happen with that. And I'm, 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 I'm exhausted with this show. That's why I'm just ready for next week to just have Michael and Chloe do their marriage. And hopefully it could be about them because I'm over all the other couples. Except Austin and Becca, they're kind of still, eh. But other than them and Chloe and Michael, dead all the other relationships. Dead them all, even though there's only one left. But dead it. We, we're over it. We're done. Um, there was something else I was going to say. Oh, we see Michael's outfit for the wedding next week, which was the blush suit. 
And to me, this is why I told y'all last week. I told y'all last week that first dress would have been perfect. Because Michael's a whimsical guy. That dress was very whimsical. He would have loved it. But, you know, she didn't want to make it about her, even though the dress is about the bride. Am I wrong for thinking that, like, my wedding dress was about me? A lot of people's wedding dress about them. But whatever, I digress. But that dress with Michael's suit would have been perfect. But she dropped the ball. Um, that's it. But like I said, I'm looking forward to that because that's the only umph I feel like I'm going to get for the rest of this season. <sighs> at least I made it to 20 minutes of the review. That's at least, you know, thank God for that. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Sorry it was so lackluster. But if you laughed, even a smirk, even a little, <laughs> please subscribe. Okay. If you didn't do none of that, that's fine. That's fine, you know. This, ep like I said, most of these episodes will be bland, so it it's hard to laugh at a bland episode. Even if I try to muster up every jokey little joke, joke I can do, that's fine. You know what you're gonna do for me, please? Come back next week. Come back next week. I'm still gonna try to make a joke, even though it's gonna be a bland episode again next week. And hopefully, you can laugh and then subscribe. Then, you know, we still got another week. You know what I'm saying? So comment down below. What you thought about this episode, be easy, breezy, let me squeeze in. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.